the command line is overpowered. Now, I did something on Twitter, which I'll just link up here, uh, where people were like, hey, Titus, it's not really that overpowered, it's just command line. And when I say overpowered, I mean you can do things you can't do without the command line. And most people were like, yeah, Linux or, you know, that. No, 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 no. When it comes to Windows, that's where it really shines. A lot of people don't give Windows enough credit when you get into Command Prompt and PowerShell because they just simply don't know. So I'm going to teach you a few things in this video on the Windows side because so many comments there, a lot of those replies in my Twitter feed was like, oh yeah, Windows is terrible on this. I'm going to tell you it's not the most intuitive interface. I'll give you that. But to say it's not overpowered is, well, you just don't know what you're doing. Then we get into Mac and most people are like, Mac has this beautiful interface and it works well. And I'm like, yeah, but I feel like I'm a preschooler, like held captive at a, a daycare when I'm in a Mac uh, system, which is fine because that daycare is very shiny. And uh, usually you can do most of the stuff you want to do in the GUI. But when you really want to tweak it and get every ounce of performance out of that Mac system, you're going to need that terminal. And if you don't want to pay them a bunch of money, you got homebrew and other uh, command line tools at your disposal with like their Xcode uh, additions in Mac, which is really, really cool. And then Linux, well, I could go on for hours upon hours, but I'm only going to touch one project in Linux today. And it's something I've been working on for the last couple hours to make a very unique workflow that no one's ever done or seen before. Uh, at least I've never seen anything for it and couldn't find any documentation. So I just created it using the command line interface. Old Windows. This is where we're going to start because it's the most misunderstood where people think well, you just have to use, you know, either the run command and, and type old panels to pop up, which these are nice. But when you really start to get into PowerShell and command prompt, there's some really amazing stuff there, which is great. So I'm just going to touch the surface here because I want to unlock this in your brain to make you think, hey, OK, this is not awful. <laughs> yes, the commands are pretty bad, but firsthand is there is a lot of shorthand with uh, command line or, or PowerShell in Windows. There's IRM, invoke rest method. And then you have other things like invoke uh, web request, which is IWR. You have all these other ones and you, you can actually type these in shorthand like this, IRM, ChrisTitus.com. We're just going to pull down one of these scripts uh, that'll just stream right through and pull up. And this can install a whole bunch of tools, tweaks. You've probably seen this a whole bunch. I got a video coming out on Wednesday about it. Uh, but then we can also do like an IWR and then do like a USEB with this. It's a little bit more complex because it grabs headers and other things, but it's the same thing. We're still grabbing files and streaming it all through our PowerShell. And, and frankly, we could even use bit service. There's a lot of different ways to get around in, in the shell or the, the command line in Windows that is just really amazing. So that's the cool part. And let's say you were like, okay, this is cool and everything, but I actually want to utilize this and I don't want you to just run this one command all over again. So we're gonna just clear it out. Let's do an IWR again, uh, or actually we'll do an IRM. It's a little bit uh, shorter hand. We're gonna grab this script and we're gonna output it uh, and just uh, let's put it as Titus.ps1. And we're gonna go into Windows. System32 is where we were at, and we named this Titus.ps1. We're just going to open it, and we'll open it in VS Code. There's so much going on here, but I at least want to walk through some of the basic commands that I'm utilizing in this script to show you the power of command line, because this is not at all an actual program. Yes, I have an executable wrapper for those people that donate, but it's a wrapper. It's still just issuing sysadmin commands that you can do independently so if you wanted to take my stuff and then just strip out all the stuff and just say, hey, I only want to install these 30 programs and then I want you to do these tweaks that I like from your script and then I don't even want you to prompt or even have a GUI. Well, that's how this all started. I didn't actually create this uh, with the GUI in mind. I did it from command line instead. Now, this is start bits transfer. This actually I'll probably change to like an invoke rest method because I think it's a little more stable. Uh, and then change up some of it. But this is downloading this Apex image from this address, and then it puts it in this destination. Pretty self-explanatory, but this one's using bit service. 
and then it installs it with add AppX provision package. So if you wanted to do any of this, you could easily pull up your PowerShell and you can say add, and then you can tab complete and see all the different packages that are going on. Learn these commands. I, it, just learning to grab packages with like an IRM and then adding them manually is a big one because that's how the Microsoft Store works. Microsoft Store just kind of does this on its own. That's the cool thing. And all I'm doing with this script is just bypassing the Microsoft Store to do this. And frankly, this is kind of cobbled together. It's, it's, it's pretty rudimentary. It can be so much better and I am always trying to improve it, but I just want you to know how OP this truly is. So you get into here and then you get like remove items where you can actually strip out whole things like this actually deletes items if you want. A little bit further down here too, I also coded in a full cleanup. Uh, so it'll delete all the temporary files and then also run disk cleanup. So what that looks like uh, once you get this, like right here, the, the delete temp files, it's going in, grabbing, doing a git again, grabbing all the child items for Windows temp, a recursive, and then removing all of the, the items found from that folder. Same with the environment temp folder. Usually this is C temp, uh, and it re does a recursive and removes all items. And then finally, it does a full cleanup using disk cleanup, which is was pretty darn cool. Instead of doing all this through here and going here, okay, oh, let's go to properties, let's go disk cleanup, then let's click clean up system files, go, okay, what is in Windows, it, Windows updates, is there anything in here? And then, okay, that's good, let me go ahead and delete files. Instead of doing all that, you just have it all right there from the command line and you can do it. Also, if you're locked out or something like you, you, don't, you have an access denied, another really powerful thing in Windows that I just couldn't live with is like a iCal or a take ownership like just doing take own from a command prompt is we haven't really touched that. I've, I've touched PowerShell, but when you get into here and you do a take own, you can actually take complete ownership of an entire device. So instead of going through here, like whenever I see like a sysadmin come into a folder and go, okay, let me go to properties. Let's go to security. Let's go to advanced. All right, let's change the owner. And I'm like, bro, you need to learn. You got to learn some command prompt. You're killing me here. Um, because one, a lot of times this fails and also uh, doing a recursive through a lot of the child uh, members can also be problematic. So you can completely take complete ownership of everything and also change those security uh, things as well. Just to kind of show that command, I had an article back in 2014 that I did. Uh, back when I was just, when I run into cool little things, I just jot it down on my WordPress website at that time and just do a full tank ownership. So this would actually take over ownership of entire drive and then would also change and grant the administrator all access and reset all those perms. So this was one way to go through and basically uncluster F a drive that gets its permissions all jacked up uh, if you want to give like the administrator's group access to all folders, which technically they should have. Uh, so this one way to fix stuff and I kind of go through and you can also do this through different methods. Like you don't have to do command prompt, but it's a really good way to do it. And even more than that, uh, I recently made a video about removing edge completely, but I saw somewhere on GitHub, someone else had done something even better. And I basically took their work and added it to uh, my project. And right here, it's a, just a batch file. This whole thing is actually the CMD to remove Edge completely from a computer. It'll go through, add a whole bunch of registry entries and get rid of Microsoft Edge. It's absolutely amazing. I can easily come back into here. Uh, again, we could either do a curl from right here or we can go directly into PowerShell and do an IRM and then just paste that whole thing, do an output to uh, Edge, dot bat. And then we grabbed all that stuff from GitHub, again, using the command line, tossed it into sys32, or you can do like a CD and then like a tidally to go to home. And then we could do it here. So then it would be in our home folder. So we don't want to have to hunt for it. So if we go user subscribe, you'll see edge dot bat. And this 
does all these things. All these are command prompt. You can go through each one. Like this is uh, adding registries. Now you could do this through PowerShell as well. That's the cool thing is these registries, you could do like an add property and, and do the same thing. But to say the command line isn't good in Windows, I saw that so much on Twitter and, and it, it's just so ignorant that I, I just have to correct people and tell you how OP this is because it's something that without this, uh, Windows would be unusable for me. I, I would just immediately go insane because of runaway processes, uh, the ability to basically like smart screen and Defender, I've already gone on rants, I'm not gonna go on it here, but there's a lot of things that Microsoft does to Windows that I don't particularly agree with. And it's my computer, it's my operating system, and well, I didn't actually pay for this one, and I still have to activate it, but I will. And since I paid for it, I should be able to do what I want. And that's what command line gives me. Without command line interfaces, whether that's PowerShell, whether that's command prompt, I just, I wouldn't be able to do it. Now, Mac OS, I'm gonna be real brief. This OS X optimizer, it's another GitHub project where you can see all this is done from Mac terminal. And these Mac terminals just basically go in and make all these changes that normally are not available to you in the Mac settings interface, which this is so important to have access to, whether it's performance, uh, whether it's removing indexers, like one of the biggest things I like doing is turning on and enabling performance mode in Mac OS devices. But even more so than that, indexing is probably the biggest thing that kills any operating system. I don't care which one it is. Whenever you have file indexing going on, that can be really problematic. So I usually disable motion and transparencies right there. And then I usually disable uh, spotlight indexing right up here with MDUtil. Uh, this right here is one of the biggest performance tweaks you can do, especially if you're virtualizing Mac OS at all. So usually disabling spotlight, enabling performance mode. I usually do this on every system and I'm not a big person for motion and transparency. So removing that even on like a Mac mini and these types of things, you're gonna get an uplift in your performance. You're gonna get better scores. You're gonna be able to use your computer faster. Again, all with terminal from the command line, which is great. And I, I wanna leave you with this. Uh, I've been doing all this basically within my Linux box. Uh, my Linux box right here, I've already gone over my website and a lot of things, uh, but I've started doing PCI pass through a bunch with, that's how I'm, I'm flipping back and forth here, where this is Windows and this is Linux. Uh, because if you look at my Windows, this isn't any old VM like you see many people run. This is fully functional and gaming. So my next video, I actually show how I did this. Uh, and also I do cyberpunk benchmarks on it, which spoiler, they're a lot better than anything you're gonna see with the hardware I'm using. Uh, so this right here is actually uh, what I have allocated to this box. And right now it's about 113 processes with everything open and running between Brave and all this. And I just kill so much in performance. But as I shut this down, you'll see those processes drop uh, drastically uh, as this is just a better way to do it because of command line. The last thing with Linux I would say is this is something I've been working on all day. As most people know, I'm a big Markdown junkie. I love Markdown. And sometimes you just want to grab something and put it in an article. So I'm making, uh, I bought a cheap mining card off of eBay for 170 bucks and I wanted to do some stuff with it. So adding images into these web pages can be a little cumbersome in Markdown if you're un unfamiliar. That's where command line kind of steps in and kind of takes the reins. Uh, so when I'm over here and I pull up my tab two, I did all this in a Vim script. Uh, this is actually NeoVim. I've just now transitioned. Last Friday, I did a whole huge Vim video uh, that probably no one watched, but it is one thing I absolutely love was being able to take an actual screenshot. So if I just take my screenshot tool, and I'm like, hey, I need this right here. So I'm gonna just copy that. And then I wanna put that in this article. So I can go from here, pop over to here, uh, let's come down one, and then I just do a leader key, and that just tosses it, it actually tossed it right in the title there. Uh, but you can see that whole thing <laughs> from, from the actual screenshot just pull right in, which is kind of hilarious, uh, but I messed that up.
Uh, but we'll we'll actually move that up to here, and we'll call this uh, junk. And then we come back to here. You can see just adding all that in real time. And, and frankly, if I did it even more, and let's take that, put it side by side, and then I wanted a screenshot of this. Do that, copying it to clipboard. All these scripts are running in the background because of the command line. That's what's powering all this. I come over to here. Uh, let's go to the next line and then do leader keyed P. We'll name this one Vim. So what this is doing, just to let you know, it, it's all taking a couple seconds to do. Not only is it doing the formatting, uh, once I take that screenshot with the GUI, it's bringing that into my script. And then the script itself, if we look, it's deconstructing that whole screenshot and putting it into my contact images uh, directory. It's pulling that whole thing where the website resides and says, hey, you should be belonging to this one because it's in this file. So it properly names and categorizes the image for me. But before it does that, it saves it as a PNG and then it runs it through a tiny PNG, which is actually a website with an API that compresses everything to a very minimal PNG state. And then once all that's done, it's like, okay, cool. And then it saves it on the website and then puts it right here. So then when I'm ready to deploy this whole website, I can just do a git push. Even though if I'm just flying through and not showing anything, <laughs> it would only take me seconds to build out a website with a ton of images all in Markdown and be able to do this in seconds, all from the power of the CLI that's driving it. And that's all this really is, is when I say the, the CLI is overpowered or the command line's overpowered, it's really, it's what's driving your computing experience, whether you know it or not. And it's whether or not you want someone else to drive you or you want to drive yourself. And that's the thing about the command line. It's great. And when you need it, you need it. Uh, I specifically needed it when I got this PCI pass through. It was a mining card with a bad vBIOS. Now, initially, I was like, okay, well, I've done vBIOS through Windows before. I never did the Linux version, so I just tried to do it in Windows. And it ended up bricking my brand new or you know, brand new eBay mining card. Uh, and then I took it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll take that put it in Linux, and then I just force flashed the BIOS through the Linux one, and it came all back alive, and it was fine. Uh, but luckily, command line was there to save my bacon, where the, you know, the GUI tool was just crashing over and over, going, hey, invalid BIOS, I can't even pull up this card. Uh, so that's, that's the big thing about command line. Now, before you go, I do have a new shirt. Uh, this is something I've been working on. I wrote all this. I actually designed it myself all using GIMP, free and open source software that's available on any operating system. Uh, pick up yours today down below this video. Uh, that's not going to be a limited time offer. I'm going to start doing these in on demand, uh, but I'm not using a Spreadshirt or Teespring. Uh, I didn't like the shirt quality, so I've actually gone with something, a different company called Bonfire. Uh, so these shirts should be a lot higher quality than you're used to for many YouTubers. And I hope you guys enjoy. And if you like it, great. Uh, you'll be seeing more designs and stuff. I'm going to pick up other stuff and have some fun. Uh, but with that, thank you all for supporting me and allowing me to just kind of geek out and do this fun stuff. That's what I love the most uh, about YouTube is being able to tackle all these really interesting projects and uh, share it with the world. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.